So today I'd like to talk about installing Python on a MacBook Pro, which is not different from installing Python uh, on, on any Mac uh, or any Mac OS device. My preferred distribution is Anaconda because it has a rich array of Python modules uh, already preloaded rather than just downloading Python from python.org. So, first thing I'll do is kind of clean up a little bit, go to our web page. As you can see here, it's the world most world's most popular data science platform. So you go to downloads, and I'm going to pick the 64-bit graphical installer for. Mac OS. As you can see, it's cross platform. All the major platforms are supported. You can even install it on a Chromebook via Linux, which I have done and which I'm thinking about doing a video on. So that's going to take some time, but through the magic of video editing, I will edit out the download time that it takes. Starting now. See, now it's done. So we go to our download location for Anaconda. Click install. Or just basically click through the installer and accept all the defaults. Because if you don't accept the license, you won't be able to use it. Now the Anaconda dis distribution, because it is so large, is half a gigabyte. It's not just Python. It's going to take a while to, to install that, so we're going to have to use some more video editing magic to get that sorted out. And it's just going to run through all of the usual boilerplate operations needed to get Python and all the various libraries, all the, the Jupyter Notebooks, all that stuff, Dask, installed onto your hard drive. But it's really a pretty simple brain-dead operation. You don't have to do much except click accept.
I'm going to edit this out, but I'm feeling parched. Okay, so now we're back. Now Anaconda, although you can use you can use any IDE that you like, they push PyCharm, which uh, actually uh, is used by a lot of people at work. So maybe I should start using it. But right now my IDE of choice is Visual Studio Code. And it conveniently asks you if you want to move Anaconda to the trash. Don't worry about that. This is just the installation file that's moving to the trash, not Anaconda at the Anaconda the Python installation itself. So when we go to the terminal terminal now, you'll notice that there will be a little uh, base before your username and host name in the terminal. Essentially, this is telling you that Anaconda is installed successfully and you're using the base virtual environment. Um, so we type Python 3. Uh, it's picking up the Python that we just installed. You can see Anaconda basically in the about. So let's do the typical thing. Hello world. Hello world. Or for So we have a, what appears to be a working installation of Python. Now, can we do some interesting stuff at this point without going to the IDE? The most interesting thing that I can think of that we can do that's cross-platform and easily doable is uh, firing up a Jupyter Notebook. So Anaconda has already done all the work needed to make sure that you can fire up a Jupyter Notebook just by typing Jupyter space Notebook at the command line. Let's create a new Python 3 Notebook. And already... we can see that you have a powerful environment available to you with very little work. So print. Hello Python world. Press shift enter to make sure that it'll execute. 
the code that you put into the cell. Now, we're not going to be going into Jupiter very deeply because this is just meant to be a basic installation how-to. So now we see that we can get to Jupiter and we can write code in Jupiter with very little effort. And we can also write Python code at the command line with very little effort. Jupiter is a great way to explore Python and explore um, coding in Python and in other languages because Jupiter is basically a platform. It will allow you to select, you, you can install multiple languages in it, although I've only ever used Python myself. Okay, that's all. Thanks.